Alrighty, folks, I have generated a list of 10 things, and actually there's 11, so let's call it what it is, 11 things about getting rich or wealthy that I wish I knew when I was younger. What I thought I would do is run through this list with Casey from Brick by Brick Wealth and get her input, her thoughts, and see if there's anything that maybe I'm missing or frankly, I'm wrong about. Casey, how are you? I've been doing so good. It's going to pour down rain later, so I'm glad right now I have internet. <laughs> <laughs> we got internet. We are connected. Uh, so I do have this list. Uh, I'll just go top to bottom. They're not in any particular order other than this is how I brainstorm the list. So number one is actually something I've said on this channel. I've tweeted actually a couple of times. And that is, Casey, inflation is a feature, not a bug. What do you think of that? I love this one. And I feel like I spout this all the time. And honestly, last September, I did an Instagram reel talking about inflation and Instagram took it down and said that I violated community guidelines. I was so mad. But what I had said about it and what I love about inflation, especially as a real estate investor, is that while everything else goes up in price, so does the price of my rents. My rents also go up. So yeah, I'm paying more in milk and I'm paying more for movie tickets and I'm paying my lawn guy more and everything is costing more. But along with that, I'm also getting increased in rents because right, real estate rises with inflation. So to me, as a real estate investor, inflation, it, I mean, it, it's just a fact of life. It's going to happen, but it's definitely a pro when it comes to real estate. Yeah. For me, at the end of the day, when you understand that inflation is a feature, not a bug, you behave different. A lot of people over the last year or two have seen inflation for the first time, even though it's been here, right? It got as high as 9.1% purportedly, others say higher. It, regardless of the number, it's the first time most adults have paid attention in 20 or 30 years. But if you are somebody who's rich or want to be rich, the key is owning assets. And if you can happen to own assets that produce income with fixed rate debt, you win. Because the beauty of that pairing is the debt gets paid off with cheaper dollars down the line, ideally 30 years. And oh, by the way, it's paid off by somebody else. It's like, yes, give me more of that. So if you really appreciate that the US economy, frankly, the banking system is built on inflation, you act different. You own assets. You have 30-year fixed rate debt. And you just hold on. And you know, if you have enough of those assets, at least four, great things happen. So yeah, inflation is a feature, not a bug. I wish I knew that earlier. So that's number one. Number two, plan for a decade, not a week, not a month, not a quarter, not a year. Plan for a decade. I love this too, Michael. And I feel like people really need to soak that in because- in our society, in our culture, get rich quick, easy, quick gratification. That's what we all want. That's what come our attention span has shortened over time. I think the attention span now in the country is like three seconds. That's why YouTube shorts and transitions and movie clips has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter because we get bored easy. There's too much dopamine. There's too much um, stimulation and um, you know that dopamine release of being satisfied. Um, it just, it sucks. And so we want things now. We want that release now. And so when we see people online and in, you know, the gurus spouting, get rich tomorrow, you can do it right now with no money, with no this, no that, you can be a millionaire tomorrow and fl flashing Lambos at 18. It's, it's not really accurate. Those things have happened for some people, but really the luck of that is few, 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 few and far between. Everything is, is misinterpreted and shown to sell you something because they want you to buy their thing and they want you to see how fast and quick and easy it is to get that dopamine release because nobody wants to work hard. We all want things to come easy. And in real estate, unfortunately, it's not super sexy. It's not super sexy. And it's, if you talk to any you know, real estate investor that gets their hands dirty, does the work and does things himself, you'll realize that, oh crap, this is like not something that's gonna happen tomorrow. You know, and it does take a decade and you want inflation to help you with that. And you want, you know, the, the income from it. You can get it now, you can get your, you know, appreciation. 
it's just going to build and build and build and build over time. And we've been in this eight years now, maybe it's nine now. I don't remember. I have to count. But, you know, a few years ago, we started feeling the effects like, whoa, we feel the second income now from rental mm -hmm. properties. We yep. feel it. Our lifestyle has gone up, you know, try not to keep up with the Joneses or any of those things, but we have more discretionary income. We can take the trip. We can order off the menu without having to look at all the prices. We can, you know, pay for people to do things. We don't always have to do all the work on our houses now. So it does take a decade. And once you hit that decade mark, you know, that's when the magic starts to really show. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I just wish more people realized that if you just do the work for a decade, you can have amazing things. And again, you know, maybe it, maybe it's come with age, right? I'm over 50 now, a, a decade's nothing, right? Do, do, do the hard stuff for a decade and you can have 50 or 60 years of just, you know, the, the other side of that sacrifice. So it's, it's so cool. All right. The next one is focus on one thing, not 10 things. What do you think of that? So when you say that, what comes to mind is shiny object syndrome. What comes to mind is, is it going to be RV parks? Is it going to be wholesaling? Is it going to be um, self-storage? Am I going to do short-term rentals? Am I going to do long-term rentals? Am I going to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, all the way to Z? Because everybody's something, again, it goes back to the second thing that you said, what is going to get me the most money, the fastest? What's going to make me rich tomorrow with the least amount of effort? I mean, that's what people are looking for. And so people will jump around from one thing to the next, looking for what's fast and easy. Guys, you know, and I, I'll say like, even sometimes I fall victim to like, ooh, tell me more about that idea. When I went to the women's retreat in Florida, there is a woman doing amazing things in all sorts of categories in real estate. But when it came down to it at the end, when I left and I'm on the plane, I'm reflecting, I'm, I'm absorbing all that I've learned. It's like, Casey, you know, long-term rental properties like the back of your hand, why start from scratch as a beginner in some other category? Do what you know and just do more, do it at scale, do more of that, do something that you love, get good at it and make it easy on yourself. Don't make it hard by going after all these different strategies. I'm going to do one of these and one of these and one of these. What? You know, you can't be proficient in all those, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. What really hits me on this one is, is, you know, being financially free for, for a long time now is I have not met anyone who's built real wealth who didn't build wealth in one thing. Hmm. Ooh, right. A lot of folks talk about multiple streams of incomes and this and that's and the others, but everybody I've met over the last 10 years, when we've really had something all did it in one thing. Yes, they may be diversified now. They may have multiple streams of income now. It may be fun to talk about now. I haven't met anybody that did it by focusing on 10 things. Because um, you just can't. Nobody's, you know, you only got 24 hours in the day. You can't be great at everything. So that's a big one for me. All right, here's one that um, I'll say it this way. You got to fire your friends. You got to fire your friends. Your friends suck. What do you think? How does that one hit? I think, you know, it's true. And I have less friends now. I know we talked about this a few months ago, but I have less friends now um, than even just a couple of years ago, even a year ago. And none of them are going to watch this. So it <laughs> won't matter. None of them are going to watch this. You know, my friends that I have, now I have some high school friends. I know you've said your friends you've met all met, you know, through real estate and all that stuff. I do have this little core group of high school friends that I've had even since eighth grade and they're great and very supportive. Um, but my mom group friends in the neighborhood, the ones that I've been friends with for 11 years, we just don't connect. And honestly, they, they don't inspire. They don't, what's the word, inhibit me. They don't push me to do the, to make the right choices. You know, it's, Hey, let's drink, you know, Friday, Saturday night, let's stay up all night or, or, Hey, why don't we hang out and do this? Or, Hey, do you watch that Netflix show? Or, you know, it's, it's never about the things that matter the most to me, which is self-improvement, making more money, striving to have a higher quality of life. Like I'm never satisfied, you know, with myself. And I'm like, more, 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 better, be better, be better, be better, be better. How can I self-improve? Like, I don't have time to watch Handmaid's Tale, whatever that is. Like, I don't have time to watch love stories or or read books about things that didn't really happen. I'm like, the only things that I consume are self-help books or, you know, how to be, um, just how to be a better business person. Um, 
and, and they're not into that. You know, they're satisfied with paycheck to paycheck. And I do mm -hmm. feel like being near that does hold me back from being in this, the other category, which is the women that I met at the retreat and some of my entrepreneur friends online. Like those are the women, those are the friends I need to have because they will lift you up and help you realize a better version of yourself by showing you the things that they're doing. And when you're down, you can be like, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it. Not, well, let me just hang out on the couch all week because my kids are off school. Yeah. It's different yeah. mentalities, different mindsets. Yeah. Folks, at the end of the day, you know, take self-reflection, look at your friends. Maybe some of them are moving and grooving like you are. My history has said that that's not the case. Typically you're looking to do new things, get to new levels, accomplish new stuff. And your friends are going to hold you back in my opinion. So, um, you know, think about it. Next one, get in new groups, doing what you want. I never really appreciated this until I had my private Facebook community. This community has people just starting, people with a couple, people with, you know, some and people with a lot. And getting in a group of positive people that are interested in helping people below them or above them and, and just networking, you just got to get in groups and, and you, you know, my group's free, right? You buy the course, you get in for free. So it doesn't necessarily have to be some huge mastermind or some huge financial commitment. Just get in new groups. Maybe it's a real estate meetup. Maybe it's a Facebook community. Maybe it's a LinkedIn, this or that, or whatever they are, but get in new groups with people that are, are doing what you want to do. The only real group that I do is I'll go to, and I try so hard to go to my monthly um, Memphis investor group meetings. I think it's so important to do things in person. So much is done online. I think it's important to meet people in real life, especially if you have the luxury to invest where you live. I think that's amazing. And if anyone has that opportunity, they should take advantage of the people that are, are that are there because meeting people face to face is the way that you're going to get those connections and build those relationships. So it's super important. Um, but on the online side, like I have my, my coaching program and we do like a, um, I have my office that I have office hours as part of one of my program options. And so people can, you know, meet during like a group setting and get to know each other. And I've had students do deals like outside of my program together because they knew each other and they connected and networked in the meeting. So it is important to form relationships and how can you form relationships? It's by reaching out, having your screen black on zoom with your name and not saying anything. You might as well just not be there. Okay. Yeah. Just go home. I mean, you Crazy. have to step out of your comfort zone and, att and attempt to talk to people. That's the way. Yeah. Love that. Next one is copy success patterns of others that have already done what you want to do. Yeah. My sister's really good at this. She has uh, read so many books on millionaires and billionaires, you know, and she's on her way. And it's like, I need to do more of that. I'm always reading, you know, the self-help books, but I have not read many biographies or autobiographies about successful people. I probably should, if you have any suggestions on any good ones to read, I think that's, that's important to do. One thing I'll say though, that I guess like one reason why I haven't read those sorts of books, for example, is because I feel like those people are so far ahead. It's just like, you know, what am I really going to learn? Like, oh, yay, you're so wealthy and rich now. You know, yeah. I don't know. Like, where's my to-do list? What's my steps? You know, I'm not you. It's cool yeah. to learn and it's cool to find the habits that they've all had in common. Like, that's cool. Um, you know, but on the other hand, sometimes it's it's also like it's a it's a story. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that. And, and when I think about copying success patterns of others, it's, again, kind of related to getting in new groups. I got, over the years, I've had people ask Olivia and I what we've done. I've told them buy box discipline, all the stuff you've heard me talk about. And then they want to fight me. Like, no, 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 no. You don't get it. That won't work for me. I'm like, go away. You're wasting my time. If, sure. if, you know, get, if you're going to find somebody you know, trust and respect, and you want to do what they've done, maybe do what they said without arguing. I mean, it's like, really? We're going to have an argument about this? wild it's crazy all right i've got this guy i wrote i took some notes here i'm reading real fast the other day i was on on a webinar and this guy has this big goal and um it's called two and a half his thing is two and a half months of go hard so he has this morning routine this is his success habit that's taken him to like a million dollars a year and he's a loan officer he says he wakes up at 5 a.m he writes down his goals he is grateful right has a period where he's grateful he meditates for 10 minutes then he plans and reviews his day and his week 
He writes three social media posts and he reads a book for 30 minutes. He said that alone has helped him structure his mornings and given him time before his kids and wife wake up and has led him to a million dollars a year in income. So I still have that, you know, like, you know, success habits. Find your thing. Yeah. Yep. There you go. All right. Here's one. Sacrifice is not a dirty word. No. Uh, I love this list because I identify so much so far with all these things you've written down. So my sacrifice, um, it's not a dirty word. It's not, but people don't like to hear it because they think, oh, I'm not going to get something. I want it all. Well, that's how you go into debt, you know, by wanting it all. I want all the toys and I can't afford them. So I'm going to make payments. No, bad, bad, bad. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Need a little bit of slap. So you need to sacrifice. Sacrifice now is okay. It doesn't have to be a terrible sacrifice, right? Maybe instead of spending twenty thousand or fifteen thousand on a Disney World trip for your family, you go do something else that costs three thousand dollars for the week. You know, you don't have to spend that money if it's not in your budget. If, if if you have to put it on a credit card and you can't pay it off right away, then you can't afford it. Then that means don't do it. For me, our sacrifice was doing our kitchen. And the way I look at making big purchases is do does my big purchase make me money? And if not, am I okay with that? So for about eight years, our kitchen that we that we live in this house, eight year, um, well, we've been here 11 years, but for the first eight years, we bought the house, it was a gutter, Michael. It had like blue chromica countertops, old 1950s cabinets painted white, I don't know how many times. It had linoleum floor, it had, well, actually it had tile floor. It had like this wallpapery look linoleum backsplash. It was terrible, yes. it was blue. And I said, Blake, we bought, as soon as we move in, we're going to gut this kitchen. Because it's, it's a gutter as we moved in. We had that kitchen for eight years, Michael. Why? Mm. Because every single year I said, well, I can spend $30,000 on a new kitchen or I can spend $30,000 on a rental house. Which one should I do? Oh, the rental house. Why? Because my kitchen doesn't make me money. So mm. we, we did that for every year and every year I was like, oh, I want my kitchen, but I'd rather have a house that makes me money. Oh, I really want my kitchen, but I'd rather have a house that makes me money. So we did that. And finally in 2021, we did finally redo our kitchen and all that money that we spent on our kitchen came from our rental, rental property income. I love it. I love it. All right. Next, do the work daily on your goals. None of this weekends only stuff. Oh my gosh. I... If you saw the amount of to-do lists that I've got, and there's notebooks galore, um, sometimes it is thinking, knowing all the things that you have to do, right? Writing them out, writing them out again, and refining and refining, refining your process and realizing what are the most important goals that are going to take me the farthest? What things can only I do? Those are the, the items that I'm going to take action on. And every day I say to myself, what three things am I going to take action on today? Every day, what three things are going to, I'm going to take action that are going to move me forward towards my goals. And then at the end of the day, I reflect, did I take action on those three things? And what are my three, three, three things going to be tomorrow? And I always need to find some success in there because being an entrepreneur, being a small business owner, being an investor, it's mentally hard. It's not an easy W2. I go to work, I clock in, I clock out. It's br not brainless, but it's like, you know, it does have that stability and you know what you're going to do, right? It's not super stressful as far as you're in control of your own financial future. So you have to give yourself those little wins and say, was I successful today in any portion of even little things, but taking action every single day and recognizing the action that you're taking and being proud of yourself for the action and having goals for tomorrow set up and ready to go, that's going to keep you moving forward. Love that. Love that. All right. Next one. Discretionary income is the only income that matters. I really like this one because a lot of people will have income and then they spend it right away. So I've seen, I, I've met a lot of broke, rich people, people yeah, that make a lot of money, but they're broke. And I'm like, how do you not have a thousand dollars for a new stove or whatever? Like, how do you not have that? So it's all about how you say there's a lot of people like us. We didn't my I was stayed home mom 10 years. My husband did not even make six figures. And we still were able to buy rental properties with all of our own money, you know, one or two a year on average, one a year on average. So it's like how, you know, because discretionary income, because we didn't overspend, because we saved it and we were able to save a lot by making smart choices. Yeah, I love that. Next thing money 
does not mean you can cut the line. You still have to do the work. All right. Say that one more time. Having money does okay. not mean you can cut the line and not do the work. So what that means to me is just because you have money doesn't mean you can't do anything with it. You shouldn't, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything with it. I think people that have money need to invest their money. They need to make it work harder. And it's their duty, especially if they have a family to make that money, make more money because they have people to support. And you should not make money and go spend it. You should make money, invest it and spend a small portion to be happy. Yeah, for me, when I think of that one, it's really the folks that I've talked to over the years who have some some money put away for a, or uh, like our, I mean, I lived where tech was. So they had stock and they had sometimes six figures. Some of those folks think that, oh, I can just, I work really hard during the day. I don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to trust so-and-so. I'm going to be an LP on somebody's apartment deal. I'm going to lend some flipper some money at 10%. And they don't do the work. They don't investigate. They don't do the homework. They're simply gambling. And frankly, they're being lazy. You're being mm -hmm. lazy. Money doesn't give you permission to be lazy. You're making an investment. You need to do the work. You can't cut the line. And uh, I'm sorry. So there you go. One more. This is a bonus one. This is number 11. Okay. Your job yep. is a great gift and the greatest risk. What do you think of oh, that? I like this one. Your job, especially if you have like a W-2 a day job, your job is a gift because it provides a security. However, we're on the risky part, false sense, but it does, you know. Um, but it's a gift because this is where you're going to make money to buy real estate. This is where you're going to make money to invest. And if you don't have a job, right, then you're going to get DSCR loans. You're going to have to use hard money. You're not going to make as much money. It's going to be much more stressful. Mm -hmm. And why would you do that for your, to yourself? The goal of, you know, we do real estate. The goal of investing in real estate is to reach financial freedom. You can reach it much faster if you keep your job. I don't understand why people want to quit their job the first five minutes. I'm going to go be a real estate investor. You know, when I got on Instagram in 2019, um, I had no idea people did real estate investing for a job. Like I grew mm. up, I want to be a real estate investor with no prior experience and no money. I'm like, what? How's that <laughs> even a thing? Like I thought real estate investing was a, was a, you would invest in real estate from the money you earned from your job. And that's how you set yourself free. Mm -hmm. So it is a gift. Your job is a gift because it provides you with income so you can be bankable and money to put down and get high quality government loans. But it's mm -hmm. also a risk because if you are too secure in that job and you don't spend the time on the weekends and after working in the mornings to learn your market, to take the next steps, you're you're letting complacency and mediocrity just be or just be Comfort. your little you're, box that you're yeah, in. Yeah, you're being you know? comfortable. Yeah, when I think yeah. of this one, that it's all of that. It's the greatest gift because, again, you're right. You get the cheapest debt. There's some security. Um, you have some income coming in. You're not dependent on a deal. Uh, it's also a great risk because of the comfort level, as you've talked about. Also, if you don't have those assets built up slowly over time, you know, you're one recession from potentially being let go and, and being in a tough spot. But um, yeah, so those are the 10, actually 11 things I thought about getting wealthy that I wish I knew earlier. Uh, what do you think of the list? Anything jump out at you that might be missing? Um, I think you covered most of the things. What a great list. And I guess I would just say um, the the thing to take from all this is to take action, right? Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do what's right for you. And if it's not long-term rentals, if it's some other asset class, just be proficient in that. Keep your day job. Be diligent. Do the work. Don't give up on yourself. And in 10 years, you will be wowed. There you go, Casey. You're amazing. Where can people find you? People can find me, guess what, Michael, on YouTube, because I have been doing my videos every week, Thursday nice. at 5 p.m. There has been a video that has come out every week, Thursday at 5, so you can be uh, aware of that and subscribe to my channel. And then I'm still on Instagram, Brick by Brick Wealth. Just so we're clear, it's 5 p.m. Central. 5 p.m. Central, yes. Thank you for clarifying. Very cool. So three o'clock out west. Casey, you're amazing. Thank you for being here each week. Thank you so much.